Uh, guys, congratulations on the show. Thank you. Um, it's one of those shows that I almost don't want to know what happens, but almost do want to know what happens because of the kind of tension and the way it's crafted. I want to start with you about where kind of the boring question of the genesis and where the idea came from and why you thought now was the right time to kind of tell the story. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't think there's ever quite a, a right time for any story. But, you know, for me, the genesis was having children and, you know, the moment they hand you a newborn baby and say, that's yours and don't drop it. And, you know, suddenly my mind thinks, what? You said don't drop it? <laughs> and then your hands become sweaty and slippery. And, you know, and I, I kind of lean towards what are the darkest things that can happen in life. And I like to, as a writer, take that take that on as a challenge and I think you know over the years as my kids have grown up and I've become a little bit more relaxed with them and keeping them alive I you know this this story has just grown developed as each new sort of chapter in my life has come together and it's fallen into into place piece by piece and you know it was only a couple of years ago that I first met Knight and I showed him the first scripts and he responded positively and you know it was a story that he wanted to tell as well and we you know we sat down and started talking about where this show can go and what it's all about and what it means and yeah so it's taken a long time and then it took no time at all it's it's one of those things that always it always tends to happen that way yeah i was talking to my friend about um the, the first episode kind of describing it without describing it and then said oh yeah toby cable picks his kid up by his legs and then slams his head into the cot and she was like, what? What is this show? That sounds like the worst show I've ever made. But it does give you a sense of, <laughs> of what it is and also what to kind of expect. When you read these scripts, what did you think when you read the pilot, especially? Because there's that sequence where you're just like, well, what is what is going on here? Yeah, well, it was really unlike anything I read. And um, it's a, just a really beautiful, challenging character to potentially play, uh, which I responded to. And um, I'm grateful to, to be the one to, to try to make Dorothy, you know, in all of her strange ways of dealing with grief uh, make sense. And um, yeah, just really excited to work on it. Was there much research for, for you with, with the character? Because obviously it's a very kind yeah. of semi-unique thing in terms of people, yeah. people don't know that, that grief until they actually, I guess, go, go through it. Well, I mean, I think I think that this show explores a lot of big ideas, which is like, what is it to grieve, and what is it to be in a marriage, and be mother, you know, what is it to be a mother, um, and so I think living was good research for being, you know, in a show like this that's looking to explore these big ideas through the genre, through the thriller, and through this really you know weird story um but yeah i mean i i i did i did research at the philadelphia news station you did you so I, I i um i did research in that way and i'm a mother so that's been a, a long time of research for uh, anything <laughs> regarding motherhood <laughs> um but i think uh yeah i mean I love that this story is about grief, and we all deal with that in as human beings. So, um, and here's a family that's really having a hard time looking at it and dealing with loss in any way. So, yeah, yeah I mean, they're a family that that are not dealing in the correct way. So, in a sense, yeah. research is counterintuitive in that because somebody will tell you what you should do, but they're not. Yeah, going they're to do doing it. everything terribly. I yeah. mean, really bad ideas. It's kind of like yeah. the, you know the idiot's guide to dealing with grief. It's yeah. the the paper. Don't over. look at it. Don't admit it ever happened. Exactly. Get a dolly. Yeah. That is exactly <laughs> what you know. Your characters are in that place. It's like, what is the quick, easy fix? And I think that's yeah. where we're at as a society at the moment. Is you don't want to put the work in to to mend. You just want to. You want to press the button and everything's reset. And unfortunately, you can't do that. Yeah. I love your sign-off, by the way. Like that down pat. That was, <laughs> Thank that was pretty you. good. Each time that it means was a quite... lot coming from you. <laughs> Journal, a journalist. <laughs> I try. I try. Yeah. I try. Um, uh, tell me about working with, with Knight, because he comes with the uh, with every film or thing he does, he comes with the premature of, oh, there's going to be twists and turns. But actually, he's such a great kind of storyteller. How important was he to kind of bring the story to life? And what was it like working with him? Because he's such a unique... Um, filmmaker and kind of visionary. Yeah, I mean, I mean, sort of. I obviously met with him before you did because you know we were working together and getting the scripts together and making sure that the story was, you know, watertight. And yeah, he's um, 
Yeah, he's got a real attention to detail. And I think he and I have that um, same sensibility in that we don't want to make things easy or comfortable for the for the characters we're writing, you know. And it's it's an important thing, I think, as a writer to to lean into the the hardest part of the job, it, you know, to take on the challenge. And he's very much up for that in the movies he likes. He likes to take risks and... You know, don't pander to the audience. You know, you tell them what this story is. You show them where you're gonna, where you're gonna take them. So, yeah, I responded to that. I think you know that that's inspiring for me as a writer to you know to work with someone like Knight. And I think on set, I mean, you know, yeah, you can... no, he's he's uh, really lovely to work with on set. He's kind of got his hand in every part of the of this show and is always uh, he's sort of the godfather of the thing. But obviously, but. Um, uh, but when he's directing and on set, it's uh, it's just a really wonderful, creative environment. He does all, like you know, he does all of uh, the storyboarding and all of the meticulous attention to every detail, and that then creates a real freedom for the, us actors to to take risks and um, and it feels like a very creative environment. He's really a, a fun person to to be directed by. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot from him. Yeah, just as a final question, I wanted to ask you about the kind of Apple TV sense. Obviously, we get on-demand stuff and we can kind of binge watch these shows, but you've purposely kept the show week after week to kind of help build the tension, but also to kind of help the audience invest in these characters. Was that important as an actor and as a, as a creator to, to make sure that stayed as it was? Like you, you went to the old-fashioned route of waiting a week to see what happens so that everyone can kind of have their, their moment to unpack it. What, about releasing it? Is that what you're talking mm. about? Oh, well, they, so they gave you... Three at once, right? So you could like binge They're the first us, three, yeah, but not they release and then first, you yeah. do the old fashioned way. I kind of like the, the doing both, you, you know, and having a little moment to digest. What do you think? Yeah, I think you got to give them enough, to, you know, enough taste to realize what what they're in. I think that that the first three episodes are a great introduction, and then you know, with thrillers, you want cliffhangers, and cliffhangers with no <laughs> gap between aren't really cliffhangers. They're just kind of. Well, I got near the cliff, but then <laughs> nothing really happened anyway. So, yeah, I, you know, I love that notion of just wait a little while, think about it, go away. Yeah, be with it. Yeah, let it breathe for a minute. You maybe watch that same episode twice before you get on to the next one. I, you know, I remember as a kid doing that on the old VHS tapes, <laughs> watching something over and over, waiting for the next one the next week. I, I love that, um, that way of viewing. So it works for me. I think, you know, with streaming, I think everyone now has a different way of watching. So... How about it? What yeah. you like? Yeah. Marinate. Sorry. You can marinate in it for a yeah. week. I think that's. I think that's good. I don't like the binge washing. It's too. It's too, too much. intense. Yeah. yeah. Too, yeah. yeah. Particularly this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. Take a break. Both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, congrats on the show. Thank you. Pleasure to talk to you both. Thank you so much for your good time. To me. Thank Pleasure. you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.